Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial how to model a trimmer with Shaper 3D. In this lecture I will show you how we can set up the sketches to loft the main body and add more details via smart direct modeling. We will start with an organic looking trimmer and finish with a more linear version. Of interest will be the process to generate the gently bent body of the organic model and the chamfer-like transition to the grip and button area of the linear version. Both files you can download and I organized the scenes and named everything to make it easy for you to read and follow. The unit system is already set to millimeters. Make sure that all your snapping options are turned on. Great, now we can get started. First, let's take a look at the organic model and review how it was built. Here we have it. We can see it from the side. And if we try to analyze the visual language, we can see the left side is smaller, the right side vertically is taller. The top edge looks like it's more linear and the bottom edge is kind of arced. Interesting. Let's take a look at the top. What can we see here? Again, smaller and bigger, but it looks like here in this case, the midpoint is the widest and then to the right end, it gets a tiny bit smaller. Also interesting, when we take a look from here, we can see that this clearly is a circle, but these sides, they feel a little bit flat. And then here, this also still looks like a circle. So how can something like this be built? Okay, let's take a look at the sketches. I rotate into this view and there you can see how I set everything up to create this loft body. So we will start simply with a circle. Then this will go into an ellipse. The ellipse allows me via X and Y to adjust the dimensions. And then I end with a fit point. Uh, sorry, I end with a CV spline. Let's take a look at this one. What's really interesting, the way how I set up the sketch is first at the center, I have a vertical and horizontal line. And then these CV points, I always set to symmetry to that vertical line. This helps me to make sure when I adjust one side, the other side goes with it. Also very interesting and important is how these three points are set up so that here where I tap, the spline kind of like follows the ellipse behind it. Also interesting is how the ellipse and the CV spline are matching up there. The circle is a little bit under it along the Z axis. And at the bottom there, we can see how they all are actually at different vertical heights. Here we can also see how the ellipse is just a tick wider. And this relationship kind of like seen from here are objects aligned or are, are they at different height points that when we go to the side view, basically then defines something slopes down or something is more linear. So to create a loft, you can select multiple shapes. You see on the left side, loft actually not popping up. And that is because in my design, I have these elements added afterwards and I have to move those out for the moment. So when I select the circle, I only have the circle selected as a shape. Then I can select the ellipse. You see loft pops up on the toolbar. Then the spline loft, there we are. Pretty nice, no? So let's say we would like to make from the side, or I mean, seen from the top, we would like to make this body wider. So I can go to my ellipse and then say, this should be 18.25. 
Now you can see now how this is wider. Let's undo this. Maybe from the side, I really want the circle to be at the same top like there. So the whole body on top will be kind of like a line. So one easy way here is I go to the circle, double tap, then select my center point and just move it so that on the left side all is on one, kind of like one ray if you want to say it this way. And loft, and there we are. No? So you see this body cannot be made out of a sweep or revolve or extrude command. We have to here create this actually out of three sketches and then use the loft command. Okay, I will undo my steps. So I have actually those elements put back onto that sketch. A little trick also when you have to do something like this like what I did to move something out. We want at one point to move them back in. I always work with snapping and everything turned on. And not so here now, 1.9 or two millimeters and then later 1.9 back. So ideally just don't go with something like 1.9, just go like two, 10, 20 steps. That makes it very easy also for your brain to memorize how much or in what increments did you move something. Very good. So let's take a look at this body one more time. You also see there is actually kind of like something cut off. How did I do this? Okay, so I will actually go ahead and move those out one more time. So by two millimeters and then create myself here this loft body. There we are. So as you saw that the tip is kind of cut with two lines. And I have a sketch for that. Let me go to my side profile sketch, turn it on, and there you see it. It's a very simple shape that defines here an angle and this angle and I can use to cut the tip off. So let's do this. I select the whole profile, go down, select the whole profile again, go the other way by extruding it and you see it cuts it at the same time. Pretty nice. I can go ahead, select this edge and round it a little bit. I will use a fillet of five as an example. And then here I will round this with a fillet of two or fillet of one millimeter. Very nice. Okay. So now we would like to model actually um, the tool head right onto it. Here, as you can see, I set up a very basic sketch that could be used to create the tool head little trick here, all these lines are actually uh, set up to be equal. So when this will be 22, you see how the left side actually moves up. Or when this will be eight, also this one will move. This way, by using the equal, you can skip symmetry. We simply dimension one side and the rest all updates. When I set this to 40, even there you see everything remains perfectly symmetrical. Pretty nice. Okay, so let's move this one out by three millimeters and I would like this to very easily be positioned onto this flat surface. That is super easy to do. I select this, then I go to align and drag and drag. <laughs> there we are. Amazing. Cool. Okay, so that's a pretty good fit. Maybe we have to move this up a little bit. So I double tapping the object, reposition the 3D widget and move this a little bit into space. 
Now this is not a perfect match to this um, shape I have there. So this is 13 millimeters, 13, okay. Let's go with 14, make it a little bit smaller. Very nice, there we are, okay. The problem is, as you can see here, I get these fragments out. And what I would like to do is have this trimmer head, yeah, perfectly follow actually this shape. And there is a very, very easy way how to do this. Well, this shape or that face, we simply extrude into another body, three millimeters, new body, there we are. Now you can see there, beautiful, perfect match. Okay. The the sketch I did there first, designing kind of like blocking out the, um, the tool head was not for nothing. So let's go back to here and take a look at the sketch because here I can see this is 8.5 and 5.5. This is actually very good to know and you will see in a moment why. So this, I can extend 8.5. But from here, I would like something to cut out and I don't have an edge there. Let's undo this, select this face again. And then here we go, extrude, type in 8.5. And this time, yes, union. And then we go and select this face. You see, because this got extruded, we have this edge there. This, we extrude. 5.5 and this we extrude also 5.5. So completely sketch free, we are creating this design here. Then we can select this edge, go to move and rotate, move the 3D widget here to this edge. So this is 8.5, let's move this back minus eight. So we will end up with 0.5 millimeter distance. Cool. Now this edge we can select and generously round. And then we can go ahead, round this, round this and so forth as needed. And then later we add all the other details. Now the tool tip obviously is a very strong um, simplification of how the real object looks like. But for me as an industrial designer right now, this is perfectly fine. This is more representational. This is more about form and shapes. The actual final design and detailing that will be done in a later process of the product development. A few more interesting tricks and details. So here, this we can round and show actually all our sketches, there we are. There, those were actually moved by two millimeters. You see the arrow. So I click on the arrow and I type in minus two, minus because this is the opposite direction than where the arrow looks at. Very good. And now I can go ahead and say, you, 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 go in by one millimeter. Very nice. Select this one and go in more. What's the radius? 0 0.75. So that means then this point, I can fill it 0 0.75. So I have it all. And on there's my simulation of the AC plug, including the, the pin at the center. Here at the end later, I would like to have a nice, um, how could we say this, um, material separation line. This, however, this cross section is not circular anymore because we loft it into an ellipse. But how do I run something over the surface and cut a groove? So let me show you what I have here. There is a line and there's a small rectangle. So the line I drew because I select the line, then I select the body and then I can project the line 
onto the body and it slices or cuts basically an edge onto that surface. And correct, this edge I can use as a path for the sweep command. So I selected the two fill parts for the rectangular uh, sketch, select the two edges and then go sweep and sweep myself this shape. Now the shape I will subtract. And there we are, beautiful. So very even representation of something like a material separation line. So we can't use, because again, this is not circular, we can't use the revolve command. And let's take a look at the button actually, it's quite fun to do. So how did I do the button? Let's double tap. Let's take a look at the sketch for the moment. I hide everything else there. So a circle. Two more circles. They all have arcs at the end. As you can see, all these arcs are tangent. The center point is locked, so we cannot move this. And all these circles have their center point all coincident constraint to each other at the center. And then you see here, there is this interesting line. What's actually this line doing? Here, check this out. So when I select this, so currently this can move. Okay, so lock it there. See how I can rotate this, but maybe that's not what I want. When I move this one back, I want the other one to move back at the same time. And there's one super easy way to do. We just draw a line and then this line we say be vertical. And when I move this line forward and backwards, ta-da, super easy. That is basically what I'm always talking about, smart sketching. Work smart, not hard. So why did I actually do this? What we can do now is we select this outer shape, select this body and say project. Very cool. Let me show uh, an interesting trick. We can select this now and we extrude it out by one inch, uh, sorry, one millimeter. And then this, I will fill it by 2.5 millimeters. And then I will select all this. Actually, hold on, we will go by 0.5 millimeters. And then these two elements here, can we move them back? We can move them up and we can sync them even in. So, so now this is on top and one millimeter, this is actually back flush. So I moved it up by one millimeter, rounded by half a millimeter and moved everything back down one millimeter. And then here 0.5 should work, could be tight because of the geometry, 0.45 will work, very good. So if I go to a side view and turn the cut section on, there you can see the type of geometry we created. Now, if each side really has to be 0.5 millimeter, then we can do actually the following. So I select all this, make myself a small extrusion. And this face, I will project onto this face. Hold on, I said project, I meant replace face. So what re replaced us, think about it like we are folding the um, this face over the curvature of a target face. Very good, so all this, we move down more a little bit, very good. Then the whole object, now this is important, we move down by one millimeter. That's our depth. This object, we have to make a copy. Turn the copy on, move it down, move it back up. Now we made a copy, I'm hiding the copy. From 
from this. I would like to remove this one and keep the removed body. Okay, so there, and here is our other object. And then I would like to find the intersecting volume. So you see there's our button, now this button, there we can fill it in as needed. Fill it this, 0.5 as needed. So that works too. You saw that this, this process was a little bit more labor intensive. That's why I showed you the way with the projecting the edge, extruding, rounding, pushing it back in, and then rounding the other edge a little bit more smaller. This technically speaking is more cleaner. The first one was a little bit more conceptual. Very good. Yeah, and then these edges here, I can select, select this project, forgot this one, very good. And you can push this in a little bit, 0.1, and to make a nice gentle look, 0 0.05 fillet. Cool. Okay. So let me delete actually those elements because we have them all already. There's a trimmer. And let's take a look at the head. This is the final head. I will show also the individual sketches. You can see. So here I put actually a sketch on the side because I want it from the left side right to this corner to have kind of like this triangular face. So now I then use this and extruded it down. And then this face I selected with a finger double tapped and then I drew all these lines and you see here I make it for conceptual reason myself a little bit easy. I just go always by one millimeter of uh, a distance or so half a millimeter of the center line and then each time a millimeter created all these lines. So I kind of like did it this way, number one, number two, one millimeter one millimeter, same here, same here, no, equal amount. And then to create the faces, I can select, I just drew left and right line. And there you can see, you know, there are my faces. Super easy. That was a huge time saver. Okay. Let's go back to my scene. There we are. There are also sketches for the screw hole. Here again, I started with a circle and extruded the circle out to make a cut. Little, little tip. You see, I only have the sketch actually one time, but I have it twice. So and the nice thing about Shaper here is when I make an object and I design symmetrically, so the object is aligned along X, Y, or Z, select an object, go to an orthographic view, more mirror, simply with the pencil tab on the grid. Then as you can see there, it will interpret the grid as a mirror plane. Click done and there we made a mirror directly over. So no, no need to create a mirror plane or something. We can simply use the X, Y, and Z grid planes for this based on what view we are in. This is really important, the view. Very good. Let's remove this. And this basically sums up how I actually designed and then finalized this organic looking trimmer. Now we can take a look at the linear design and study what is interesting here and what could be a design challenge and how we could do this with Shaper. So we can see up front, from the left to the right, it gets bigger. The left and the right side are also rotated and 
it looks like there is a perfect linear transition. Same from the top. And then the, we have this very interesting inset faces with these beautifully crafted chamfer transitions. So how do we how do we create this? Okay, let's actually hide all the objects and let's take a look at the sketches we have. So here are my two left and right sketches for the start and the end. The loft command likes to loft between one and two. So basically each face I select, it starts lofting between. So this would kind of like be three. We cannot, for example, group actually faces together, which is not really a problem. This is actually also a very symmetrical design. The reason I have everything set up this way with this center line, as you can see, is when I double tap onto it and go into the correct view. This process, for example, helps me here. I have a center line. I can dimension it and make it vertical. There it is. And this point here, I don't want to move. These two lines, I will make equal and at the same time, horizontal. So when I move this one, there you see how the other one works. It, it's kind of like it's a different version of symmetry. Same here. Symmetry. Oops, sorry, not symmetry. I meant equal and horizontal. And now I can even go ahead and say the maximum distance should be 24. And you see how it shrinks each line or segment individually. That's basically the reason why I work with this center line there. Very good. Okay, let's exit the sketch. I can select these two halves, loft, easy, double tap, then go more, mirror, select this interface, mirror this over, done, double tap, double tap, and join. Super easy. Cool. Okay, so this is actually my starting block. Let's go to appearance and show hidden edges and we will then um, be more able to see also some of the sketches which are inside. So here this has to be rotated around there and this has to be rotated around there. So how do we rotate everything? Let me show you that's actually super well solved in Shaper. So I select this face. And then I go ahead and go to move and rotate, move the widget to this edge. And now I can rotate it. This is however, not just a rotation only. This is actually um, more a shear. What do I mean with this? Let's go to this view. Pay attention to that this line does not change. So this is actually super amazing, for example, to add a draft to something. So we build it very normal and then we go ahead and where we need, we add a draft or like in this case, we just rotate the face. Cool. Obviously, then, then I and can memorize how many degrees did I rotate this particular face if I want to do this more via a traditional trimming detail, then I can try to do it this way. I will hide actually all the sketches I don't need. Now this edge, I will project onto my grid. So you see there is this line. The reason why I projected it is so I can see the start point. Let's lock the line. And now I can draw myself here a line go over, go down, and give this a particular angle. Very good. And there, extrude and cut. Same here, extrude and cut there. So the advantage of this process is I can always go to the sketch and then say, aha, 25 degrees for 
how far this face was rotated. But this also adds additional elements to sketches. And I always try to keep sketches rather very simple and do the most of my work via direct modeling. And I can always just on a piece of paper, make myself a sketch and take a note. Okay, good. Let's make this rather boring object look a little bit nicer and give it some fillets. Cool. So how did I do now this really nice looking inset face there? Or not inset face, inset surface. So probably you will know, yeah, I can cut something out. Okay, good. If I do this, now with this trapezoid shape, but now I need to put something in. Okay, so might make more sense if I make myself here a copy. Bring it back, let's hide it. And then same steps again. There we are. Cool, so this one we hide now. This I make really large and then simply move up. Where is my other copy? Oh, this is the incorrect one there. Very good. So you, you and you intersect. So find the volume. Cool. Okay, side the sketches. And there we are. And I will turn this off for the moment. So it's easier to see what lines I'm looking at. Okay, so if I select this face and say minus two, I can shrink or kind of like move it. Same here. And yeah, same here. When we move this by two millimeters, this means then this has to shrink too, to get a nice evenness between here to there. Okay, yeah, so that, that seems fine, good. Let's join them together. Now we can go ahead and fill it this beautiful. Same here. I'm skipping the other side. And now we can chamfer this. Okay, we have to select then all these edges. There we are. Yeah, and then we run into some, some issues. So what's the issue here actually? Well, the problem is as you can see here, this distance and from there to there, that's not the same. So this process thought logical, but as we can see, man, that's, that doesn't really work. So what else can we do? The solution here is actually super easy. We also shrink this, this, and this face by minus two. So we make this a little bit smaller <laughs> because now we go back in and say, so this face to this face, loft, cool. This face to this face, loft. And you see, there is our perfect chamfer and loft. Then all these objects we union together and then we can go ahead, select these sharp edges. And now we can round them. And look how beautiful actually the topology is. These lines flow fantastically well. So as you can see here, the, the loft we not only use for creating the main body, we even can use to use loft to create what's called a transitional surface. In our case, kind of like this um, chamfer-like transitional surface. So let's take a look at the final piece. No, I, we did the same here on, on top. I also extruded this had exactly the same way. Here you see previously I had a sharp edge and this sharp edge 
then I chamfered. So I could use then this face and extrude it out into a body. And I did there the same. In this case here, actually, um, no, also there, we have to extrude this. We can't just simply push this out because otherwise we don't have these tiny details. There. Very good. Nice. So in, in this model, you see there right now also, I might I have to rec um, I have to correct myself actually, sorry. We in, let me go back here. Actually, I did indeed, if this is something you want, we can extend this now, but then we don't have actually these tiny, um, yeah, faces, so we can't extend it out. But if, if this should be the maximum trimmer head area, then that's fine. But how do we then actually from this view, for example, trim? Kind of like cut the the tool head. So let's actually show the sketch. And there's the head. And there you see I drew actually simply this rectangle, and this is right at the center. And that actually helped to remove the part. So here, let me show you. Two extrude by two as a new body, very good. And then this, wait, we want to remove these corners. So I don't make it intersect there perfectly. So this is basically no here I can define the flat area and then you cut down, select this and cut up. Ta -da. Yeah. And the rest is pretty much exactly the same way like with the trimmer actually for the round one. There are all the linear parts. You can see based on where the sketch is actually that I did this before I did this trimming. So be careful about now the the step by step. Again, this will be a machine made. Also, um, there's so much engineering that goes into designing these blades. What I needed to do here only was just to create a representation that makes sense. Here again, I just did my power button, and to simulate that this whole surface is actually maybe something that can move up and down. I created a small groove. So, and let me show you how I did this groove. There are, for example, now this is the, the basic body. And very quickly, I will loft this one more time. Now we can see how fast this process is. Very good. I'm just only going to round here these parts five millimeters. Very nice. Copy down 11 and back zero. Very good. And one way. So you see also for the top one, exactly the same process. This time as a new body, move this up and intersect. There we are. Three and three and then one, two, three, four, five. You see, I can actually do the multiple phases at the same time. Minus two, there we are. Very good. Very 
that's actually also the nice thing. Once you understand kind of like the process, then it's kind of like working it off. Join this all together. Cool, there we are. And now here, let's do these rounded corners. Very good. Not too big, right there, the fillets were intersecting a little bit. Okay. So how do I now cut actually a groove in there? So I will select this line and then I will go more project and project it onto, for example, my sketch here. So there's this line. Let's lock this. So this cannot move. Okay. And we just make a circle, 0.25. So the size of the circle is actually important here. I will go with something 0.5 just to make it a tick bigger so you can see what I'm doing. Maybe that's a tick too big. Yeah, let's go. Let's go with 0.2. So half a millimeter. And then I select the profile, so the ring, select this edge. This step is not important. We have to select all the tangent edges. And here too. Whoop, there. And then we select sweep. And there it created now kind of like this tube along this edge. And then this tube, I will select from this body. Don't keep it. Very good. Now, this obviously is not 100% correct. Uh, again, however, the point was to simulate kind of like some sort of a gap, maybe something that could move. So from a distance, there we can see, aha, this thing might move or so. There is clearly a gap between them. Okay, very good. Let's take a look at the final design. How we do the, the AC port, pretty much we covered in part one of this video. And this essentially sums up everything about what I wanted to show you, how to use Shaper to create the sketches and then VR Smart Modeling create a more organic or a more linear trimmer.